Hello friends, this is Worm, and today I wanted to talk about Void Titan inside Destiny 2, because Void Titan, in my opinion, is the subclass that has fallen off the most since, uh, since I guess, their whole rework, you know, since 3.0s were added, and the Darkness subclasses, and of course, uh, things like Prismatic were added. And I think that there's, uh, there's a lot of reasons as to why, but really, when I think of subclasses, like, everything else in the game comes before this like i get more use out of void hunter i get more use out of uh you know stasis warlock strand warlock strand hunter like all these i get i get more usage out of than void titan because void titan just doesn't it doesn't feel very intuitive to use so i want to talk about each of the issues that i think this uh this subclass has and maybe some of the ways that bungie can mitigate them so I've got light GG pulled up over here with all these different things. We'll talk about each one as we go. Starting off, of course, with the supers. Actually, before we start with the supers, there's something I really think I need to point out with Void subclasses, and that is that when Bungie designed the Void subclasses, Void 3.0 subclasses, they had the idea that each different class, Hunter, Warlock, and Titan, would build into a different one of each of the buffs, right? So Hunter does a very good job and a lot of its aspects are built around invisibility. Think Vanishing Step, the ability to dodge and go invisible. Think things like Stylish Executioner, which is a very good one that allows your, uh, um, sorry, your invis time to potentially be just forever. Vo uh, Warlock has Devour, sorry, my cat's meowing in the background. Concentrate. Void does devour, you know, and they have Feed the Void. And when you have Feed the Void, you get more grenade energy, you get more health than you would with just devour normally. So, with that being said, Titan, what does it do? What does overshields? It, it's, it does overshields. And a lot of its aspects here have a lot to do with overshields. We got, you know, Bastion, Unbreakable, uh, Offensive Bulwark, like all of these work very well with overshields but at the same time the issue that i see with most of these is that the overshield uptime is severely limited and i do understand the reason as to why it's severely limited because overshield is very strong but i don't think it's so strong that we need to have these types of restrictions on it so with that being said now let's talk about the supers Damn cat. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Starting with our first super here, which is Ward of Dawn. Now, Ward of Dawn uh, historically has been a staple of Destiny culture. I mean, think all the way back to Destiny 1, where Ward of Dawn was basically like a requirement in most team related activities, even in solo content. Like, Ward of Dawn was a very good option to use. I mean, just Void Titan in general was very good to use. Uh, but Ward of Dawn is. A very strong option and really word of dawn to me is still a strong option if you don't know what it does it creates an indestructible dome as it says here it creates an indestructible dome to protect you and your allies now one of the things that they changed with it here recently is while you are inside or near the word of dawn you and your allies gain a void over shield so this is uh this is something a little bit new but i mean i don't really know what else there is to say about word of dawn it's pretty good where it is like it provides you a safe haven that nothing else in the game does not even well of radiance provides the same safe haven that word of dawn does because when you go into a word of dawn you are i mean you're not in technically invincible but you feel unstoppable especially if you pair it with helm of saint 14 which blinds enemies i mean it's it's like you know sh shooting fish in a barrel so to speak um but Ward of Dawn, I think, is pretty good where it is. Sentinel Shield, also a pretty decent super. It's a good roaming super. It has good damage potential. It also has Banner Shield, which can increase your allies' damage. I think Banner Shield is actually one of the highest damage buffs in the game. I think it's like 35 or 40%. I think it's 40%, which is really good. Again, Banner Shield, pretty good where it is. But we have a new one here with Twilight Arsenal. And Twilight Arsenal is kind of where kind of where things fall off and i've heard a lot of people say that twilight arsenal is absolute garbage tier it's not worth it it's weak blah blah blah. i don't think it's as weak as people are saying because of the way that you're supposed to use the super so of course the way you're supposed to use the super is you throw these axes you know for big damage then you can go pick them up 
you can use some light attacks. You get basically 10 ammo. You can use light attacks. And then when you heavy attack, it will actually throw the ax and get rid of it. But it again, does another massive amount of damage. And I think most people are just saying, oh, you throw the ax and that's the damage that it does. But that's not true. You throw the ax, then you pick it up. And if you're using it optimally, you're picking it up. You're using nine light attacks followed by the heavy attack. Like that's how you're gonna get the most amount of damage out of it. And in that case, it's pretty decent. But at the same time, the steps that you have to go through to make this super like decent damage is just incredibly high. When you could use something like Thunder Crash with, uh, you know, Falling Star, you could use something like Needle Storm, uh, you know. So I think the Twilight Arsenal could use some tweaks to how much damage, how much initial impact damage it actually does. So when you first throw the three axes, just increase their damage like 15% or so. Like it doesn't have to be a huge amount because that's how most players are using them. Most players are not throwing them, then going and picking them up and going and getting kills. Like most players are throwing them and then that's it. Plus, think of the number of bosses that are technically out of our reach, like, you know, Oryx, just for example. You can't throw an axe at Oryx, then go pick up that axe, melee him a couple times, then throw it back at him to get maximum damage. Like, it's out of your range, right? So I think increasing that initial impact damage or that initial explosion damage would just help the weapon a little bit. And again, not by a whole lot, not by 50, 60, 70%, even though that'd be awesome, but just something small, like 15%. I think that's, that's the number that I kind of settled on. If you think it should be more or less, tell me in the comments, but yeah, that's that is that's Twilight Arsenal. It needs a little bit of a buff, but not a super major giant buff. Now we move on though to the aspects, and the aspects are kind of where Void Titan is really falling off the most at. And I want to start with Controlled Demolition here, not only because it's the first on uh, Light GG, but also Controlled Demolition, in my opinion, is the most balanced and probably one of the the best. Not one of it is the best Void titan aspect and actually i don't think it needs all that much help which is kind of counterintuitive to the video i'm making here but what it does here it says hitting a, a target with void ability or a volatile explosion makes them explode uh, makes them volatile as well further damage to a volatile target causes them to explode and then it grants you and nearby allies health when those volatile targets explode near you again this is a great great if not one of the best ad control um ability uh, aspects in the game like it's phenomenal and then you compare it with you know a weapon with like destabilizing rounds or something like that or just or i'm sorry um uh yeah destabilizing destabilized i can destabilizing rounds i can't remember the exact name of the perk then you compare it with some volatile rounds or something and you are just gonna go to town with add clear and you're gonna be getting that health back this is overall i think a pretty balanced pretty balanced void aspect this one i wouldn't touch but moving on to the first problem child we have bastion bastion states when you cast your super it will grant an overshield to you and nearby allies it also says that casting your barricade grants an overshield to yourself and nearby allies uh, and it empowers your your barricade which empowers ignore that word basically all it does is whenever your barricade's out and you're behind it you're slowly gaining an overshield over time and it stops your void overshield timer from actually running out this is a really strong support aspect and way back in the day way back when season 16 first dropped this was majorly problematic because at the time the rally barricade cooled down in like i think 12 or maybe 14 seconds like at its max cooldown you know tier 10 resilience and stuff um but it cooled down super fast. So you could pop a barricade and before your barricade ran out, you could have another one ready to go. And so you could just constantly chain barricades, chain, you know, uh, these overshields together and stuff like that. However, through a series of nerfs over the past several seasons, now the cooldown, like the base cooldown for Bastion is ridiculously long. Like if you have a rally barricade, which I think currently rally barricade, normal rally barricades cool down in 16 or maybe 18 seconds. It's one of those two. It's 16 or 18 seconds at tier 10 resilience with bastion equipped that increases the cooldown time to like a minute or something ridiculous like that and i know a minute doesn't sound like a long time but considering that most things in destiny 2 will absolutely destroy you within just a matter of you know seconds if not millisecond uh, milliseconds mind you we're not talking about pvp we're talking specifically pve here it feels like it takes an eternity to get this back. And in order to use Bastion to its fullest effect, or even uh, an effect that feels reasonable, you have to build completely into your into your class ability. I mean, you have to have utility kickstarts, you have to have classy contender, you have to have strategist now, which is a you know, new perk, great addition to the game, by the way. Um, but you have to build 
really, really into it. And that's just, at that point, it kind of becomes unfun to build so heavily into something that even when you build into it like that, you're not getting all that often. Like I literally was doing a build the other day where I was trying to get my barricade back as fast as I could and I would pop it. I would have, you know, my max armor charges. I would have utility kickstarts. I had a strategist weapon and it still felt like it took an eternity to get that barricade back. Now, again, inside PVE, I understand why we have it that way, but inside PVP, let's let up on that a little bit. Let up on that cooldown. What I think should have happened with Bastion is the same thing that happens with uh, like Hoarfrost uh, barricades, for example, or Frost. When you have Hoarfrost equipped, your barricade has a standard cooldown of a towering barricade. So even if you have Rally Barricade on, it cools down in the same speed as a towering barricade. Do the same thing for Bastion here, right? So even if you have a Rally Barricade, you put your Rally Barricade down, it has the same cooldown as a towering barricade, as opposed to giving it this like four or five times longer cooldown. Like that's just ridiculous. And really, once you do that, I think everything else about Bastion is fine. You don't need to do anything else to it. You don't need to add damage to it or, you know, anything like that. You could also, if you wanted to, you could also add an effect here instead of, you know, instead of decreasing the cooldown, add an effect that says when you get kills while behind your bar rally barricade, it gives you class ability energy back, you know, maybe 5% per kill. Right, like that, that would be that would be another option, but really, I just think just reducing the cooldown altogether is the way to go for Bastion. But that's the problem with Bastion. Let's move on to the next one, which is Offensive Bulwark. And Offensive Bulwark, I think, is also pretty good, but Offensive Bulwark definitely still needs some changes. So let's talk about what it does first of all. Uh, offensive Bulwark states, while you have an overshield or you're inside the Word of Dawn, your grenade charges significantly faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows restore a small portion of your overshield and extends its duration. Uh, you gain an additional shield there while in Sentinel Shield. So this had a change recently. Uh, actually, the last part of that right, where is it? Right. Oh, come on. Right. Uh, well, the last part there uh, where melee final blows restore small portion of overshield, that was actually a relatively new thing that was added, uh, which definitely helps the subclass out a lot. But here's what I think we should do with offensive bulwark. I think on top of having a faster grenade cooldown, it should also have a faster melee cooldown. And if you really wanted to go there, you could build into Bastion. And when you have a void overshield, it gives you your class ability back faster. That way you're getting your melee, your grenade and your class ability back all faster while you, you know, while you have offensive bulwark equipped and it would have that great synergy here just like you know another synergy that i can think about the top of my head is solar warlock heat rises and um icarus dash those have wonderful synergy with one another do the same thing for bastion and offensive bulwark you know offensive bulwark now cools down your barricade faster while you have a void overshield then of course bastion gives you that void overshield like that would help it out a lot uh, but i also think that another change that should happen to offensive bulwark here is actually the amount of um, overshield energy that you get from a melee kill currently it's like 10 overshield HP maybe 15 like it's super tiny I mean in any real content I mean even in even in regular content regular strikes like you're losing that bef like quicker than you can gain it like you have to go on a melee rampage start punching everything and really you get in a in a, in a fight with a thrall the thrall takes off half your melee should you kill that thrall with the melee you get like 10% of it back like it's it doesn't feel all that great like yes it does extend the duration which is nice uh, and when I say extend the duration I don't mean literally just extend the timer but it actually makes your overshield technically last longer as long as you can get melee kills but at the same time like I think it could be a little bit more so you could build into that because at the same time if you're up there meleeing enemies you're putting yourself in harm's way and you should have more of a trade-off for uh you know for doing that but yeah, that's offensive bulwark. That's really the only changes I would make to offensive bulwark. I think it's, I think it's okay. Uh, you know, it needs those cooldown changes though. It needs those cooldown changes. Uh, so that's offensive bulwark. And last, I want to move on to the newest of the bunch, unbreakable. And unbreakable has been uh, complained about by the Destiny community for being too weak. And I definitely see that because uh, it's, it's, it doesn't feel very good to use. Now, we talked about this in a video a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe a couple days ago, something like that, and some things that we could actually do to change it. And I stand by most of what I said. We're going to go over those again, but basically, let's break down what Unbreakable does. Uh, it currently, it says, hold your grenade button to summon a void shield. Notice it's not a void overshield. It's an actual physical shield, like in front of you, that blocks a portion of incoming damage and gradually drains your grenade energy over time, while also granting you an overshield 
over time. So basically, as your as your grenade drains, you will get an overshield. And by the time your grenade is completely empty, you have a full void overshield. Now, it also says that releasing the grenade input or running out of uh, energy releases a frontal blast from your shield that deals increased damage based on how much damage was actually blocked. It also says combatants that come in contact with the shield are temporarily temporarily disoriented we can we don't have to worry about that last part right now um the biggest issue i have with unbreakable is how little uptime it has it's it's in a similar boat as bastion there's like no uptime for it because you're like you you hold your grenade button for like four seconds like three and a half four seconds and you block damage but at the same time your grenade is now gone like you don't get the option to use it again you don't have you know okay i want to use it whenever i want uh which i don't necessarily think you should be able to use it whenever you want just freely but right now it's in a state where you can't hardly use it at all because it takes so long to cool down and this also you know has to do with some of the void grenades and there are ways to build into unbreakable you know things like devour things like demolitionist and we'll talk about those in just a second but at the same time even when you're building into those it is very difficult to keep this up at a reasonable level again i don't want players running around infinitely with unbreakables you know i think unbreakable could be something that is potentially one of the strongest aspects in the game if it's if it's too you know if it's tuned too much but it needs to have more uptime so one of the ideas i had for uptime is that whenever you're blocking damage as you block damage you get grenade energy back so for example like you you're standing there you block damage while you hold your grenade and let's say you block enough damage uh you get 50 percent of your grenade back just instantly after it ends okay and currently if i'm not mistaken you can use unbreakable at any point uh or no, no no actually i take that back in order to use unbreakable you have to i think you have to have a fully charged grenade like you can't have half charged grenade and then use it uh, or anything like that like i think you have to have a fully charged grenade but a change that i think could th the change that i suggested could work with this because you can't just infinitely chain it over and over right like it would be different if you could activate bash uh, i'm sorry unbreakable whenever you wanted like if your grenade was at 25 percent, you could still activate it if it was at 50 percent, you could activate it but because your grenade has to would have to run out before you actually got that grenade energy back it would deactivate the shield you get 50 percent of your grenade energy back and that would put you all the closer to being able to use it again but it would also still leave you in a situation where you have to play carefully because of course if you're, if you're standing right in front of the boss blocking all this damage and then you know you run out of energy like you're going to be in a, in a bad spot so it would still require some common sense to use but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world like getting grenade energy would back would be nice now i know there's a, a lot of people that are probably gonna say well, what about devour that's a void that's a void you know verb that you can easily use and yes like devour is something that can help you get your grenade back faster i believe it gives you 10 percent grenade energy per kill when you have devour active uh, but i think that when it comes to devour and titan like that's not really a synonymous thing like in order to get devour on titan you have to be using an a, a fragment sorry where you have to pick up an orb of power or a void breach um and that's I'm not going to say that's difficult to do. I, I don't think that's a fair thing to say. Oh, it's difficult to do that. But at the same time, it's potentially like you're going to be in situations where it's like, I can't quite get to that orb to activate devour or devour doesn't last as long as I want it to. And, you know, stuff like that. Also, I don't find devour being all that great on classes that aren't feed the void warlocks anyways. Um, but yes, again, this can be good if you're building into it and it's kind of the same thing as bastion like if you're building heavily into bastion if you're using a strategist weapon if you're using you know utility kickstart mods and you know armor charges and and a classy contender weapon and all this stuff like then yes like okay now it's like yeah i i now am able to get bastion back at a more reasonable level but still it's like i don't want to have to build completely into everything i have like my opinion of destiny 2 if you're going to build completely into something you should have almost constant uptime for it if i want to build completely into bastion i should have compl almost complete uptime of it if i want to build completely into unbreakable and my grenades i should have almost like i should have like a 90 percent uptime so to speak like 90 percent of the time i have it ready to go when i want it and 10 percent of the time i don't have it ready to go when i want it um but again we don't want to have to do that i want to have to build into something so heavily to get like you know a, a 90 to 100 percent usage rate i want it to at base have a higher usage rate so i don't have to build heavily into it and so you don't have to build heavily into it either um but so yeah you know i know you can build into it um 
but I just don't think you should have to build, uh, build that much. Now, the other thing about Unbreakable that I think could be a really good change is the part about releasing the grenade button slash running out of grenade energy. It's going to, you know, launch that damage back into enemies. Uh, this is one that feels really awkward to use because sometimes your enemies are just so far away that there's like you're not going to do anything. Like all you're going to do is block damage instead of actually launching it back at them. And a potential change I had is something similar to Lance from Destiny 1. And so for those of you who didn't play Destiny 1 or maybe you just don't know about it, Lance was a Void Warlock Nova Bomb subclass tree that you could select that would launch your Nova Bomb really quickly in a straight line. Okay, like it didn't have that little like, you know, heavy arc. Uh, it didn't have tracking on it back in Destiny 1. Like it literally would just shoot it straight forward really far. Similar to how the Aegis works in maybe Volta Glass, you know, when you're trying to, uh, you know, shoot an Atheon or, or something like that. Um, but the same thing here. When you're absorbing damage, it collects like right in the middle. And then when your e grenade either runs out or you actually, uh, you know, let off that button, it will then launch that projectile in a straight line at whatever you're aiming at. That way, if enemies are in front of you, it'll launch it in front of you, hit an enemy and detonate and kill the enemies in front of you. Or if you are maybe in a boss damage scenario and you've run out of all your other ammo, so now you're holding your shield, you will now be able to launch, you know, maybe not a mini Nova bomb, but eh, no, who cares? Yeah, a mini Nova bomb at the boss. It doesn't deal nearly as much damage doesn't have area of effect or anything like that but be able to launch it you know 40 50 meters back at a boss or something like that like i think that would be a great change for unbreakable but with that being said that's the that's that's void titan i think void titan just not really in a good spot right now and those are the changes i would personally make to make these uh to make the subclass feel better again it's mainly in the aspects like uh, twilight arsenal does need a little bit of a tweaking but the aspects these three right here the uh, bastion offensive bulwark and unbreakable they need some buffs especially bastion and unbreakable those they just feel unusable at this point but yeah with that being said i want to hear your thoughts on void titan like do you am i just missing something is there a crazy build that i should try that gives you uptime more uptime on these if so let me know in the comment section below of course tell me your thoughts on it and uh yeah if you like the video drop a like helps the channel out a lot subscribe for more daily destiny content conversations and discussions and all that fun stuff and uh do me a favor watch the videos you see on the end screen because for whatever reason youtube thinks you'll like them we'll see you on the next one bye for now